Hey there guys, it's your good pal Legley, and welcome back to more Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All Blind. In the last episode, we got through Old Bag's testimony, starting to prove uh, Adrian Andrews' involvement in the case. And in this episode, we're heading forward to the second part of the trial in the case. This is where we have to prove it, unless there's a part three of the trial, which, uh, if memory serves, the last part of Rise from the Ashes had a part three, so it's not completely unheard of. But the cases in this game, or rather the trials in particular, are super long compared to the first game for the most part, and I quite like that change. Dude, I can't believe that Adrian... No way! Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews! She is your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony, during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. Well, if that's the case, then how did she get your whole outfit? Because hold on. Hold up. Wait, that's kind of weird. She very clearly has, like, the mechanical arm and the pants. Like, the whole outfit. How did she get it off you while you were sleeping? Is that really what happened? What? <laughs> See, she could have also easily have planted that button, that blood-covered button in your Hakama. Hmm, because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Maybe. Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corrida. But why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her, her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. Before, you seemed to know quite a bit when I presented... You told me to, like, get out of your past when I presented... I think it was the suicide note, or the suicide report. So I think you know. It'll be all right. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a, like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix. You think her motive is related to Celeste Impact's missing suicide note, right? More than likely, yeah. Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact's as her strength and reason to live. But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note, and the person thought to have hidden it is Juan Corrida, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corrida. All to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Ms. Andrews' dependency issues with regards to Miss Impacts. It was Edgeworth. Yep, it was Edgeworth. <laughs> it looks like he's still in the one... He looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. I'll play along. I know what's going on with Edgeworth. I'm putting all my eggs in that basket, but I'll play along. Court will now convene. Reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Juan Corrida's room. Mr. Juan Corrida's room. All right, Adrian, let's go. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt on guard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Oh, uh, yes, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Oh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. <laughs> God, if the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relationship to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corrida. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm, so it was a fry and bait matter. Was that bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. <laughs> but I... But I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. I don't think she did either, Phoenix. I... My gut is telling me. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Mr. Andrews. Very well then, witness. Please testify to the court. About what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. 
Okay. Back into the thick of it, boys. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. What I saw was, naturally, the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Uh, that's kind of weird, but okay. You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of a crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She is one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking. Yep. So you have to attack when she's least when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over. Understand? Okay. Well, let's start pressing. Uh, it was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. And what was Mr. On Guard doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm, Mr. Ongar did say he was taking a nap. Then I guess you could say it could not have... It could not have been taken out of his room, yes? Excuse me? It? What are you... Right, I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with a subject, then I'll, I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. Ongard's knife from his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object, right? Did you skip basic grammar? The witness may continue. I mean, it is the subject in there. It's just very vague. <laughs> After that, I went to Juan's room. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show is supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? I mean, let's... Sure, why not? Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had more personal matter to discuss with the victim? Sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at that time. I can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got to his room? I mean, we have a... We have a strong piece of evidence. But she asked us to keep quiet about something. It was this, right? She asked us not to talk about her attempted suicide, just... She didn't say anything about Celeste's, correct? I think I'm remembering correctly. And there was this dead body. I... I was in shock. You were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corrida. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. <laughs> hmm, I see. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I mean, it wouldn't be the exact same. Because the wine glass wouldn't be there, but, I mean, you already explained the glass, right? How did you set the glass there? With, like, the vase in the way and the guitar case? That's kind of weird, actually, now that I think about it. This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yes, the one with the knife lodged in his chest. And the guitar case was like this, too? Yes, it was open and empty, of course. Oh yeah, we have to explain the water, too, somehow. And then, what did you do next, witness? I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. 
juice? Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table. I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There was no lip marks left on this wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down without drinking it. That's so weird. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corrida, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank? I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. Uh, it seems like a big deal. What was she starting to say just now? We need to know. Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime, and that was the glass of juice. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm, actually, so would I. I, I'm sorry, it's just, it's kind of embarrassing. When I, when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Okay. Okay. Okay, I know where to take that. I did not know her pants were bright blue. F flower vase? Are you talking about the one in the, on the floor in the crime scene photo? This mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser. But when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. So, like, what about his makeup? So you're telling me that there was a vase on there, and his only his makeup got knocked down in the struggle while he was being strangled? I don't believe it. Also, uh, water on the lid of the guitar case. Well, why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. I was the one who knocked over the flower vase where it fell onto, onto the guitar case. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it does, but what kind of flower vase was it? It was a glass vase, and it was fairly big and heavy. I thought I would try to take it, take take Juan's pulse, so I set the glass I was holding down on the dresser, and that's when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. That's odd. I thought she was always in total control of herself. That's what she would like people to think. Always be mindful of the gap between your perception and reality. It doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. There is. I warned you earlier that she would not crack so easily. The only way to make her is to keep on the offensive and not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some very strong, decisive evidence. I have to find something. I just have to, for Maya's sake. Okay, I've got it. Alright, um... One who knocked over the flower vase over where it fell on the guitar case. Boom. Yep, nice. You testified that you knocked this flower vase over, is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? It, is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. That's very true. Furthermore, there is one other strange thing about this guitar case. Uh, and w what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. It's open. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with that? And what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shards would be inside, not outside the case. Ah. What is your point, right? But the case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over. Is that all? No. Think back to what Ms. Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. That, that's impossible. Mm. Yes, that's right. She did implicitly say that she didn't touch the guitar case. But, 
but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. That may very well be, however... Ah, the empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to the case, doesn't it? Hmm, it seems that there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Uh, it's our only lead, so we have to. Just have her testify, we'll find something else. The empty guitar case... I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. Alright, I'll follow along, for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. Yeah. You must have, but why? It's not a big deal, though, right? The case was empty, after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Fuck me. Okay. Oof. Hmm, it looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Hmm, using any way to change the topic. A convenient escape for a weak man. <laughs> okay. What do we got? Alright, I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. During your testimony just now, did you remember those events clearly in your mind? Well, you see. Are you sure you are the one who opened the guitar case? She's... She's waiting for someone to tell her if she should answer or not. Sounds like her dependent side is taking over. Well, Miss Andrews? <laughs> yes, it was me. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the bass over. So, you opened the guitar case, then? Y yes Well, maybe. Why did you open the guitar case? Huh? Mr. Corrida's dead body was right there in front of you, wasn't it? I would think that the first thing you would do is call for help, not open a guitar case. As the witness has said multiple times when she found the dead body, she was dazed. Hmm. Maybe I... Maybe I was curious to know if the bright red guitar was alright or not. I thought maybe the criminal took it. Why would she care about the bright red guitar? But getting back on topic... It's not a big deal though, right? The case is empty after all. I don't really know where to take this whole thing. Was it really empty? I was just wondering if maybe when you opened the case, the guitar was still inside. How long have you been a lawyer, Mr. Wright? Have a little professionalism. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. These trials would be over in half the time if you would just pay attention. Yes, pay more attention, Mr. Wright. Sorry. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Was that because you were shocked and dazed at discovering the victim's body? Yes, that's probably it. I'm not going to get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk is with some evidence. I guess I should give it a try. Come on, Phoenix. We can't afford to let up on her now. I wasn't planning on letting up, but... She's at her weakest now, so this is our chance. Yeah, if we had a weapon to hit her with. I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the court record, waiting to be found. Okay. I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. Is there any way I can prove that... It was bef- well, no, we, it couldn't have been before. Why? Why would you open the guitar case? So you- you're saying you got in there, you poured yourself a glass of tomato juice, set it down, went to check his pulse, hit the vase. What about the makeup? Was the makeup already on the floor? That doesn't... How would the... That, that, that's my only thing I can think of, is why... How, how just his makeup would be on the floor, and not the vase. But I don't really know... 
Was her suicide note hidden? Stab with a knife. Huh. Let's try the crime photo, maybe? This, uh, this feels... Uh, this feels not great, but we're gonna give it a go. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. It doesn't see anything contradictory. Damn, okay. I don't know what... What I need to present here. Okay, time to think. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it. Got it. It only bears Corita's fingerprints. She couldn't have opened it. So Corita had to have opened the guitar case, but why? So it was knocked over... What? The, the vase was knocked over before Corita was dead. And then he opened the case? But also, Matt's fingerprints weren't found. Like, ob ob like, nobody else's fingerprints was found on the knife. But obviously, if we're defending him, Matt didn't do it. So, how did the knife get over there? She must have some way of hiding her fingerprints somehow? That's... Uh, either way, this is a contradiction. Yeah, okay. I don't... But I can't... My brain is not quite piecing everything together, and it's frustrating. There's no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. <laughs> really? <laughs> Phoenix, you're not Sherlock Holmes. Uh, because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. Ah. You really have to pay attention to the court record, like the extra text. What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? That... Then how'd you leave fingerprints on the wine glass? Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the awards ceremony. So of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin, thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. That's strange. You were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Yes, I do. Obviously, your fingerprints on the glass. I have your proof right here. This wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah. Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange that you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ah. Oh, her glasses <laughs> that she puts on new ones? <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> order, order, order. Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. What do you mean? I believe that that guitar case plays in a very important role here, but what? But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, but the guitar, the bright red guitar was at the studio. Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. It's, yeah, it's not necessarily true that Corita had the guitar in the case. But he certainly brought the case with him. There just might have been something else in there. What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not right either. <laughs> hmm, I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the case... Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided... No, Your Honor. Please recall that Ms. Andrews had has testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten us as to why that guitar case has anything to do with this murder. I think I understand. Uh... Can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um... 
Well, let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. Yeah, okay, I see where this is going. The bright red guitar not being the only thing. Y you don't mean to suggest that a bright black guitar was inside the... <laughs> a bright black? So you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty. Is that it, Mr. Wright? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? Was it... Was it the suicide note? And why would something like that be inside a guitar case, let alone this one? Why, Mr. Wright, why? Well, I just thought it might have been possible. I have a suggestion. Why don't you put that in the void of where your brain is supposed to be? No, really. Never bring it out again. Can a foolish, a foolish fool get some love? <laughs> Do you think you should prove your theory? Could you prove that the guitar case was not empty at the time of the murder? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Yep, yeah, okay. Well, we've already, we've already read that whole thing. So what? What was inside the guitar case? Not a lot as camera. What? Like, I feel like she would have just, like, been looking for the... the suicide note, right? Oh, God. What was inside the case? Um... The real killer. No, that's not... No. Um... I wish we had a picture of the Jammin' Ninja, because I don't know if the Jammin' Ninja had a scarf. Uh... God, I don't know. Um... I... I genuinely don't have any idea what was in the guitar case. Uh... I think... I think what I'm gonna have to do here is just, like, start presenting things at will and see what I could possibly find out of it. I'm gonna... I feel kind of scummy for doing this, but I just... I don't... I don't have any goddamn clue what could have possibly been in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna start presenting evidence... I guess, uh, was it, was it the knife? It doesn't make any sense, but maybe I'm thinking something wrong. No. Okay. Um, okay. Was it not the wine glass? Uh, not his button. God, I don't know. Cause I, I felt like my brain was like, oh, she was searching the room to see if she could find the suicide note, right? Like maybe it was inside the guitar or something, like in like the hole of the acoustic guitar, maybe where he put it or something, but no, that, that doesn't work. I don't know. Was it, was it a teddy bear? Maybe? What? Okay, what? <laughs> the, this is... This is a photograph. Yes, but what is important is what is in that picture, Your Honor. It, was it a teddy bear? In this picture. It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I am proposing is... Inside the guitar was the nickel... What? The nickel samurai, the hero's very own costume? What? <laughs> I... <laughs> Hello? What do you mean? <laughs> Ow! Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. If... If On Guard was asleep, 
then how the hell... Yeah, okay, I thought about that earlier. But then, how did... <gasps> oh, I'm stupid! I'm dumb! <laughs> I just realized that this is a photo of her... <laughs> I'm so fucking dumb. I just realized that this is a photo of her leaving on guard's... Sorry, leaving Corita's room. Not on guard's room. I, for some reason, I thought it was her going from... Uh, on guard's room to Corita's, not the other way around. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I, that one's my fault. That, okay, okay. I probably could have put that together, but my brain was not thinking of something correctly. This is another box was already there moment. What? Okay, so she found the costume in the box. She went over there as Andrews. Just plain sight. And then left wearing the costume. Interesting. So, there were two costumes? Question mark? Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to, uh, to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Ms. Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Ms. Andrews? Why? I, I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You... you mean this photo? Order! Order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm, so the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. But wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendant be in the victim's room, and inside the guitar case of all places? Hmm, true. That is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was the Nickel Samurai costume doing inside this guitar case? It must have been a, a spare costume, right? Mr. On Guard could, did not take his costume off during the break period. That makes more sense, but... That makes more sense from the perspective of how did she get the costume, but also why the fuck would it be in there? In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had brought this spare to the ceremony on purpose. But... but why? The victim, Mr. Corrida, was the Jammin' Ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai's spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? And therein lies the sticking point. Yeah, a why? What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? N no I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? No! <laughs> I didn't even think of it! I, I bullshitted my way to this point! Oh god! Okay. Think carefully before you answer. And then an answer with, and then answer with gusto, I believe in you. All right, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was, oh God. Why? The Nickel Samurai. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, that would explain, that would 100% explain why on guard didn't know about the confession during the ceremony, right? Because Juan was going to pin something on him. What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. Interesting. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up right. But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ongard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. 
But how can that be? The way I see it, that can only mean one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida himself. The, the victim? Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corrida was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. Interesting. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference. But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Corrida, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Mad on Guard. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But if that's the case, that is not a confession, that's public disclosure. Hmm. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. And you knew. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared that second costume for him, that was also me. Okay, well you're digging yourself a grave now. You? Juan had bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, that's what he thought anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? Huh. And do you know what the secret of Mr. On Guards is, Mr. Ms. Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Then why did you help him? Because you were close to him, right? Oh, I see. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone. Yeah. But that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. P protect Mr. On Guard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. Okay. What's going on? From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what, and he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt I had to protect him. Hmm, this does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. What do you mean? What were you protecting him with? You didn't, like, fix the crime scene in his favor. You fixed it against him if you were the one who fixed the scene. We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I'm ready to make a ruling. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine, Mr. Wright. Looks like somehow everything has swung into the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. How the hell would you have protected him? What do you mean? Okay. Well, we made it past that one part, so let's go ahead and save. Okay. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ugh. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. I have the first two. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school, at least not from what I can, what I can remember. May I continue now? Matt had to kill Juan with no matter what. So would you say this need came from the press conference? Matt didn't know about the press conference, though. Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event in that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Ms. Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. On guard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? 
Uh, anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. Miss Andrews, please correct your testimony, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? Okay. I know what his motive was, but I didn't have... I don't have any way to prove I'm right. There are plenty of ways to prove you're right. <sighs> like all of the evidence that the scene. Has Mr. Ongar done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? Mmm, mmm. Okay, that, that's, that, that's a definite yes. You were the one who helped Mr. Corrida with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. On Guard, yet you still helped out. Objection! The person on trial right now is Mr. On Guard, right? What the witness was thinking helping the victim with his plan is none of our concern. I feel like it's very important, Edgeworth. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. But, but, didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. On Guard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could build cover for Mr. On Guard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him for the show, he was... Blah, 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 blah. He was mostly... Honestly, was sleeping. Oh my god, brain. However, there... As to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm. I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said. I can't say the same for the... For some people here in the courtroom, however. The judge is glaring at Mia. He's glaring at you, smart guy. <laughs> My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. The button? Ma'am. Ma'am, the button was found after the fact. So you couldn't have known then about the button. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a, ca a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. We're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matt's Sakama, isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Hmm. Urgh. It looks like you were outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. But anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. Huh. Is there anywhere I can take that? I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. <laughs> With an icy stare, yes. <laughs> Miss Andrews, for what... For Mr. Wright's sake, please add this to your information to your testimony. That button was torn off Juan during his fight with Matt. That's weird, though. Like... If he was strangled to death, how, why would the button be torn off in the front? The button was clearly torn off to put the knife there, right? Yeah, if you're, if you're strangling somebody from behind, why would the button be torn off? Well... Like, if you fought beforehand, I guess. But then, like, how would you get him in the chair? What? Okay, hold on. I feel like I'm, like, half onto something here, and I'm half not. <laughs> This is a difficult trial. Wow, okay. Um, I mean, we only have one shot at this, right? Oh, hold on. Wait. That's not true. It's not true. It couldn't have been... Okay. The button couldn't have been torn off during the fight because the knife was stabbed after, because the blood went onto the button from the knife stab. 
So it, it, the button was tor was 100% torn off after the fight. I knew something was weird, but I was trying to pinpoint exactly what it was. So yeah, then stabbed with the knife after he was strangled. Yes! Go brain! <laughs> this is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was a strangulation by scarf. S strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. Uh, and what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly, which means it is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. And the only reason that it could be torn off the only possible reason would be to pin it on Matt. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ah! That's right, Miss Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off the victim's already dead body. Order! Order! What, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We know now this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took, took the time and an effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? It was to pin the crime on Ongard. 100%. There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Ongard. There's no way anyone would put a bloodied button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. Ongard was set up. By the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Yeah, it's been, it's been tough, but we did it. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard, is... It has to be Andrews. I believe her, but this th that's where literally all the evidence is pointing. Nobody else here makes any sense. At all. Yeah, no. It has to be Andrews. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you. You are Mr. Corrida's killer. What? Order, 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 Mr. Wright. This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. What? How preposterous. You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife, which, which knife to take was you. <sighs> yeah, it's true. There is also that factor that only she could have known which knife was Matt's, too. Th then, what, what about the button that was found in Matt's Hakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done were done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. On Guard was the real killer, there's no way he would have put such an incriminating incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Ugh. Yeah. The only person who could have put this button into Mr. On Guard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is you, yet again, Ms. Andrews. I I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Ms. Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled from the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just, a co just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. 
And that person is you, Ms. Adrian Andrews. <laughs> no, I... Oh, God. But Ms. Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found in the guitar case. And it is you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Th that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so we're going the route of... She poured herself the glass of tomato juice, set it on the back, and then went behind him to strangle him? Right? Maybe? So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. Ah, okay, that could also be too. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was the class classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah! Okay, yep. On top of it all, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they, exited, as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Sorry, Andrews. Speaking of how tall people are... Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? <laughs> Please, stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I... I... I refuse to testify. What was that? Th there's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. Okay. Okay. Well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What?! Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ongard's room... Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. Okay. That's it. That's when Francesca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Ms. Andrews to not testify if things looked bad. Uh, true. And she was planning on being here today, too. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done. <laughs> What's wrong, Wright? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence. What is so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. Wh what? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You've yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corrida. I have that proof, but it's not going to be fun. M Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corrida? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No, she's been ta taking that defiant. She's taking that defiant attitude again. M Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is a the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid, definitive proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there's only one thing this court can do. And that is to declare a recess. R recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into the- Oh, no. Now tomorrow's trial. T tomorrow We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then- Please wait, your honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial. Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... that's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. 
If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... Please, Edgeworth, please. It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Holy shit. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Y yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there's one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Y yes and I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring up it's not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Okay. Okay, thanks, Edgeworth. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he a friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. Okay. Let's go. That glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Interesting. Hmm, so you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay. Oh, come on. That glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. But there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, who did you pour for? Who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there is a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, right. Be quiet and listen. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ugh. Okay. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. So, it was a mess? Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Corrida? I understand your frustrations at not being able to prove your theory, however, before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Ugh. And then, what did you see next, witness? And Juan. He was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. Slumped over? Yes. He was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me, or did that there... That right, that right there sound a little odd. Yeah, because, like, if you... If he just looked like he was sleeping, then you didn't see a fucking knife in his chest, right? Then I, when I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Then what did, what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix, and then felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see, so you didn't think he was dead at all. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. You thought he fainted? I thought he was asleep at first, but then the room was in such a messy state, I thought maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. You're all over the place, Andrews. And that's when you went to pour the glass of juice. Yes, he always has a hard time waking up, so Juan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, what happened next? 
When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower things over. Okay. And how did you come to realize that he was, in fact, dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to take his pulse. I... I was shocked and staggered backward and knocked the flower vase over. So that's what happened. Then wouldn't you have also knocked over the glass of juice? Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides, and Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance yet to kill the prosecution. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? Okay. Glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. Interesting. Surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. Well, he wouldn't have... Yeah. No. No. That doesn't, that doesn't add up. No. Right? Contradicts this evidence. It does, though. You would have seen the knife in his chat. Hello? Okay, well. Alright, I guess that's my mistake. Damn it. Okay, so I tried presenting it on this statement. But this statement, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind, is more effective. I just made a save, so if this is wrong, I'll be fine. Okay, okay, my bad. I was a little too quick on the draw, I suppose. Uh, so you honestly didn't think that he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Ah! What, what is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There's a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corrida's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that there was a dead man. Ah, uh, um, that's... Well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted. And then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your, your point is... Miss Andrews. Your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Ugh. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. No! Oh, God. It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt on guard, is not guilty after all. That... but that's impossible. You're wrong. M Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It... it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt. I swear it. He's the one who killed Juan. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. Oh boy. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matongar's innocence has clearly been demonstrated. Is... is it... over? Have we... have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually, well, usually, the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't, yeah. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt on guard. Oh boy. What is your deal? Where, what do you know? Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. W what? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. The absolute real truth? What are you... Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Madangard will go free, and in his place... You will become the guilty party. Th that's that's a lie. I I don't believe you. What? I I was told if I spoke, 
If I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. Well, what in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I, I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca von Karma. Oh, God. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly to the words of another, because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. The, then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt on guard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now, and is clinging on to them. Th then what should we do? This this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. Yeah, this is a very... Everything in this case is super unique. This is crazy. Way different. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is... Is get our not guilty. That is my only priority. Phoenix... I don't think that's right. It wasn't me. I'm begging you, please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help, please. Someone, help me. Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor? The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right. I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. I think, I, I think I've been correct from the beginning. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else I could be except the woman crying over there. Right? No, not right. Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... I know... I know what... Andrews did. Andrews, I, I firmly believe still, Andrews didn't kill him. She just framed Matt. But why? Who's the mastermind? It can't be the killer, because the killer wants Matt to get be not guilty. For some reason. I don't know why. But then who else would want Juan dead? We don't have enough information. How am I going to finish this fucking trial? Oh my god. Okay. Um Well, okay. If if we request if we request not guilty without seeking the truth. What a decision. Good god. So either we let this whole thing go free and save Maya but we're terrible because we didn't or we risk it. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, this is stressful. Uh force Andrews to testify cuz it's the right thing to do? Question mark even though Maya, oh fuck. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But if I can't bring myself to do it like this, not when she's making a face like that. If we if we requested a not guilty right now, we'd be no better than Edgeworth and Von Karma were. You know? By Von Karma, I mean Manfred, not Francisca. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure. Mr. On Guard would get an acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want this trial to end? But be quiet... How dare you? You, you're trying to trick me. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. It, you're wrong. What? What a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this, however. What, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S stop M Mr. Edgeworth! This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. Oh god, Edgeworth. This is brutal. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide- Oh boy! Oh no! S stop, please stop! No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. 
I have the evidence right here. I can't believe Edgeworth is pulling this out. Ah, uh, th that's... That's the second part of a suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop, I beg you. If people find out, if people find out, I, I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is no of no concern to me, damn. Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still-breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. Good God. So, will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk, but please... Help me. I feel so bad for Adrian. Kinda. Nothing matters anymore. My crime. Okay. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why, that's why I ended up cho using the Nickel Samurai costume. What was the inconvenience? To so stab the body with the knife, but why would you do that? Isn't it obvious to pin the blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man. Wh what do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? Last time? <laughs> so Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corrida, in the chest with the knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for murder. And this, this is her crime. It is a crime. W what How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Ms. Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get your shock and commen- Please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Huh, okay. What's last time? Is he the reason Celeste committed- Oh! Okay, yeah. That would explain the how much do you know line from before and when he got all serious. Mmm, okay. But... Oh boy. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted, honest. But you could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know that he was dead? He... he had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is a part of the Jammin' Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I wake, I'd wake him up and went to, went to pour the juice. Okay. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. That's awful of you. You should have just let the truth come to light, probably. But also, like... I, I can see where you're coming from. You're very... You're a very disturbed person, too. Especially if Matt's involved with the whole Celeste thing, so... I understand why you did it. Again, I don't agree, but I understand. So the four pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. 
That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. And then I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip off the, the button? You thought you to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. Ongard's comma? Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. What's this inconvenience? An inconvenience. There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. How did you see her? Did you just peek through the... Uh, I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lada. <laughs> my spikes. There's also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. That's Miss Oldbag for you. I had already been caught and made, it in, and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get it caught again. And that's why, that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. I, I think I fully believe this testimony, which is a problem if I have to find something wrong with it. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the awards ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is this secret? That, I don't know. Really. Anyway, I thought if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, you went back to Mr. Ongard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Akama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word! What does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt Ongard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. Hmm. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Oh, wait, your honor! The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Let Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But, but... Mr. Edgeworth, please place, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for, arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange her for the deter detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Today's... today's trial. It's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? 
Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remembered just now. I found this in the room on that day. Really? The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. Okay. And we saw it in the bed. So the killer did do it? But then why would he want... <laughs> because Maya found it in the killer's location. Like, the the room. The card was there, and that's what she used to open the the thing. But then why the hell would he want Matt on guard declared innocent? What? You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card, if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me, hurry! Ed Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what th what you stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. I... I didn't mean to... What, what is this all about? I've never seen... Ed oh, sorry, I've never seen Edgeworth so emotional before. That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? Oh, you can't leave me there. Oh, come on. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Dude. Where is this going to go now? What could possibly happen now? Fuck. Well, I guess, I guess we're just going to have to find out in the next investigation period. <laughs> Okay, um, well, shit. Thank you all for watching this episode of Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All Blind. I've been Guildmaster Wiggly. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. If you're a new, consider subscribing. If you want to follow my socials or join my Discord, they're in the description. And I hope to see you all in the next one when hopefully we get a call from the killer saying he's extended it a day or something. Because Jesus, fuck. Uh.